My brother hasn't left his room for two months. Now I know why. My brother and I used to be so close. We were two years apart. My brother Ryan was the oldest, and I was the youngest throughout both of our childhoods. We were inseparable. We played and hung out together all the time. Things were happy. It all changed when I was 11, when I was diagnosed with leukemia. From what I have heard, Ryan was practically forgotten by my family. My parents constantly visited me in the hospital, staying by my side during the majority of my chemotherapy. Even when they were at home with Ryan, they still only thought and talked about me. I remember my brother's face as he saw me in the hospital bed. The first time he saw me, he looked distraught. It must have been hard seeing your own sibling in a state like this. As more and more visits went on, the expression on his face had changed. His face looked hard to read, almost like he had something on his mind. I didn't think much of it at the time. Thankfully, I quickly went into remission and have been cancer-free for around five years. The whole family was thrilled, including Ryan. Not long after I was released from the hospital, my parents revealed to us that they were having some financial trouble and would both be having to go back to work. I was 11 and my brother brother was 13, so they trusted us to be home alone. I'll never forget Ryan's face when they told us. He looked absolutely crushed. It was from then on that our relationship seemed to change. Ryan became distant and withdrawn. He was quicker to anger and didn't seem to want to be around me. At the time, I figured it was part of him becoming a teenager. While this behavior continued for next five years, it was only around three months ago when his behavior began to get stranger. It started after he finished his senior year of high school. Once once summer break began, he started spending much more time in his room. His bedroom is on the basement floor of the house, so he always has his privacy. Not long after school ended, I began to notice some odd signs. I remember sitting on the couch, watching television. Ryan wasn't home, and my parents were out working. When Ryan came home, he was carrying some sort of container. I couldn't tell what was inside since it was covered by a white sheet. I asked him what it was, but he told me loud and clear that it was none of my business. He brought the mysterious container down into his bedroom. He then came back upstairs, back outside to his car, and came in with another container, still covered by a white sheet. He continued this a few more times, coming back with more covered containers. At this point, I was extremely curious, but I didn't want to upset him by asking again. Once he finished retrieving the containers, he went back to his car and returned with more stuff. This time, he came back with many bags of food and bottled water. All of the foods were non-perishables, like bread, bread, canned goods, and crackers. Finally, he went downstairs and locked the door. I was confused, but I wasn't very concerned. I began to get alarmed the next day, when he still hadn't left his room at all. I knocked on his door, hearing him shout for me to go away. I tried pulling it open, but it wouldn't budge. He must have did something to lock it from the inside. Eventually, my parents got concerned too. They tried to open the door, but Ryan convinced them not to care. He told them that he was an adult, and that he had food and water to sustain himself. They gave in not wanting to argue after a long day of work. I, however, refused to give up. Every day, I tried to convince him to get out, but he always yelled at me to go away. Finally, about a month later, I gave up. Another month went by and Ryan still hadn't left his room. None of us tried to get him out, since we knew he would just end up yelling at us. During the night, my mind would often wander and think about Ryan. As time went on, my thoughts became more and more paranoid, and I began to get worried. It was around the two-month mark when I decided enough was enough. I woke up early that morning and couldn't fall back asleep. My parents were working, and it was just me and Ryan at home. I silently crept down the stairs and walked towards the door to Ryan's room. I knocked gently, silently. I knocked harder, but still got no response. I tried calling his name, but was still met with silence. I continued to knock, eventually banging at the door. I was getting really scared. I put my ear to the door and noticed something. I heard a noise that sounded like a muffled buzzing. I finally got to a point where I decided I had to force my way in somehow. I went in the garage, retrieved a baseball bat, and headed back to Ryan's door. I struck the door. As the wood broke, I was hit with a horrific stench and a swarm of flies flying out. Suppressing a gag, I turned on my phone's flashlight and headed downstairs. I called my brother's name. Ryan? Again, I was met with silence. At this point, the buzzing was deafening. Finally, once I reached the bottom of the stairs, I shined the light. What I saw will haunt my mind forever. Sitting on a computer chair was my brother. He was completely infested. His eyes were red and bloodshot with parasites swimming about. He was naked, covered in deep, bleeding, open wounds filled with squirming maggots. Worms and larvae crawled throughout his body and underneath his skin. Flies swarmed the room and landed all over his body. His light brown hair had grown long and messy, covered with insects. 
On a desk near his bed were the containers I had seen. They had contained the insects he had brought down here. He had been living off of the food, ensuring that he survived. I approached my brother. He lay unmoving, his bloodshot eyes glazed over. His chest, however, was still rising and falling. Suddenly, he spoke. Alex. I stuttered a reply. Yes, Ryan. He spoke quietly and eerily calm, his voice a rasped whisper. Do you think mom and dad will finally care about me again? It was at the moment where everything finally made sense. Ryan had felt abandoned since my diagnosis with leukemia. It only worsened as my parents both started working longer hours. And now, here he sat, infested and dying, having just a sliver of hope that his parents would finally have a reason to give him attention. Tears were falling down my face now. Of course they will. Barely 20 minutes later, the ambulances arrived. My parents rushed home from work and couldn't stop sobbing once they saw Ryan in his current state. He was rushed to the hospital and died hours later. He had gotten exactly what he hoped for. Mom and dad are distraught and cannot stop thinking about him. At first, I felt guilty. If it wasn't for my leukemia, he never would felt neglected. But then I felt anger. He didn't have to destroy his own body. All he wanted was his parents' attention, and now he isn't even alive to see it. Now, as I stand in front of my brother's grave, I feel nothing but pure emptiness. A hole in my heart that Ryan once filled is now empty. I sighed, looking at my brother's grave. As I stared at his engraved name, I noticed it. A little maggot was crawling down his gravestone. 